I just finished updating my Sony and now we have S Cinetone. Let's go film some stuff. In this video, you're going to see a side by side comparison or top to bottom actually of the GH5, which we kind of know its look already with the uh, S Cinetone of the Sony A7S III. I used the natural uh, color profile for the GH5 and I think it did pretty good, but check it out. In this part of the video, I tried to match the camera settings and it came out pretty good. I think they look a lot alike despite having um, the screen uh, tell me that they look very different. They It looked very different to me, but um, when the footage came out, they ended up looking very similar as you can tell from this footage the only thing that kind of threw me off was whenever i would look at the gh5 screen it was correct exposure but but when i looked at the sony screen it was also correct exposure but when i brought it into post it was overexposed maybe i'm not exposing s tone correctly yet here in a little bit you're gonna see where I kind of messed up. I tried to match what I saw on the back of the camera um, with each other and the colors ended up actually looking a lot more different. I tried to warm up um, the GH5 so that it matches the A7S 3s S Cine Tone profile, but I I think it's it was too much. If I didn't do that, like like you saw earlier, it would have been um, a lot closer. Overall though, I was very surprised to see that the GH5 was able to put out some amazing footage. Despite it being a little bit of a an older camera. Now don't get me wrong, I think the A7S III is worth every penny that I spend on it, but hey, the GH5 is a really great camera still to this day. And if you are considering to want to get into filmmaking, I think it's still a really viable option, providing that you buy great lenses to pair it with. Now, some people might be bothered by how the depth of field um, kind of doesn't match when you have you go from a full frame to a micro four thirds. But um, looking from looking at this footage, I I'm actually pretty um, pretty impressed with the GH5 and how um, it still can compete to this day. However. If you do a lot of uh, late night events or weddings, I think the A7S III is still the king of low light. So if you shoot in a lot of dark places, I suggest getting the A7S III or um, getting a lens that has really wide aperture for the GH5. Now, those are just my thoughts. If you want to take a look at more footage, there's more after this. And at the end of this video, towards the end, I did kind of like an autofocus test. I know that the A7S III will crush the GH5, but I just wanted to provide that content for you guys. And I was actually surprised that the GH5 kind of was usable i mean it's not it's not crazy good like the a7s3 but hey it still kind of worked so um this is where i'm gonna stop talking and just let you guys watch the video um if you haven't subscribed subscribe please subscribe um and 
I hope this content provided some good insights for you. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.